Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. I am so happy to welcome my guest, Maria Amori Davis. Hi, Maria. Hi, Anna. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, thank you so much for being on. And you are energy healer extraordinaire. Um, you do so many different things. I'm so excited to be able to bring to all my listeners all the wonderful things you do. One of the things that you do, one of the many things you do, is that you're a Reiki master. Um, so, I, you know, I became a Reiki master about 20 years ago, and I remember telling people that I did Reiki, and people would ask me, you're a landscaper? You know, um, now I think most people really do know what Reiki is and, um, and how we can heal from it. You do two different kinds of Reiki. You do, um, you know, what people typically do is, um, you know, you Shui's Reiki and you also do Karuna. Can you tell me what the difference is? Yes, um, um, Yusui Reiki is what most people know. Um, Dr. Yusui brought this to the forefront over a hundred years ago, and it's it's hands-on healing. It's it's wonderful. You can heal yourself. You can heal others. Um, when you learn Reiki too, you can also send it uh, across the globe, and I do that really often, especially with things going on nowadays. Um, and it's it's it. It, it balances the chakras in your body and, and the, uh, the system that holds us really through uh, all sorts of emotions and mental, emotional, and spiritual healing. Uh, Karuna Reiki is a really special because as, with um, Yusui Reiki, there are five symbols which all enhance your regular hands-on healing. With Karuna Reiki, which is got a, Karuna means compassionate action, and it's a feminine feel to it, and it's got eight symbols to it, very specific symbols. Um, I use them all the time, and I also chant them into people, ch chant them into people's bodies, and they feel uh, the opening of those cells. Uh, a couple of the symbols would be um, Shanti, which means peace, and so many people need that Shanti right in their heart chakra. Especially and, now. Especially now. And Iyava is another one that I... I seem to use quite often and eva is about uh, empowering yourself and the third chakra is where your self-esteem is located and believe it or not that comes up quite a bit too so for it's those really of you who are not familiar with the chakra system they're the energy centers in our body so if you're familiar with auras um, they're part of the chakra system because they radiate out from the body do you mix karuna with yeshui reiki or do you do yeah. them separately? No, I use them together all the time. I one session could I, I put actually when I work on someone, I and put all the symbols into their crown chakra. And I think that they go where they need to go. And then when I work on people's um, chakras uh, separately, I use the this the symbols that are calling me to what they need. And they, they work beautifully together. Sometimes I use them all, sometimes I use one. It depends on what the client needs. And both, um, you know, anytime you're working with Reiki or most of the modalities that are out there, and now there's, there's an awful lot of energy modalities out here, it's um, you're channeling the divine innate intelligence. Is there a difference between the two different Reikis that you use, how that, how divinity is channeled into the um, energy work that you're doing? No, it's, it's my intention. And it's me listening, and I use my pendulum, and I my pendulum gives me guidance. And you, as I said, you can use all just Yusui for one session, or all Karuna, uh, or I mix them up. And most of the time, that's what I do. Okay, but from what I understand, the um, Karuna Reiki, it's a more of a channeling of the divine feminine. Would you agree yeah. with that? Yes, yes. And does it feel different than um, when you're doing Yusui Reiki? Yeah, yes, it does. Actually, the it feels like the energy of Karuna actually holds you. It's it's a compassionate feeling. It feels like it surrounds the person, you know. And I feel that within me too. Where you, with Yusui Reiki, I'm actually applying it into the chakras and into the body. But the Karuna is really very, very loving. 
So would you say if you're working on a person, that energy kind of goes out to the environment or other people who may be around? Does it spread out or it's just intended for that person? Well, I intend, we intended for that person, but the, the, fun, the interesting, I call it fun part, and I, I just love this, is that when they walk out of the room, you know, that energy is, is changing for the better, and that, that's what changes on the outside. Well, that's pretty wonderful, because I think this world needs so much of that right now, compassion and love and peace. And to have that radiate from the person, you're not only touching individual, but you're touching so many people. It's like a domino effect. So um, that's really, that's very interesting. And you also do um, cellular memory work, which not everybody does when they do energy work. Can you tell us about that, please? Uh, cellular memory is one of the most fascinating parts of the Reiki that I do. And it, it, it gets to the root cause of an issue in your cells. Um, for example, um, I worked on somebody recently and I use my pendulum and I ask questions to myself. I don't, sometimes I talk to the client too, but I want to know where, what, what is it that we need to release today that is stuck in their body, in their cells, and where is it? So I'll ask questions of how old they were. And for example, I got somebody at 16 years old. And um, I asked her, I said, well, what happened to you at 16 years old? And she looked at me startled. She goes, I haven't, I haven't really thought of that in a long time, but I was raped at 16 years old. And she buried that, uh, you know, thinks she forgot about it, but I said to her, your body didn't forget about it. So that's stuck in your cells and let's release that. And then the next question I asked is, where is that in her body? It happened to be in her throat chakra, right here. Um, and the throat chakra is your self-expression. So she buried that and never spoke about it. So that release for her was big on many, many levels. So hopefully when she, and I know when she left the room, she'll be able to speak her truth more and to be more open. Have so that's how Sylvia works. And, excuse have, me? Have you seen her since then? Yes, she's come back. She, she's wonderful. She comes back and we keep, you know, working on new, more things. It's, it's wonderful. Have you All seen of changes us, in her? Yes, she's... She came in here the first time. I've seen this particular client maybe four times, and she came in pretty quiet, pretty um, uh, inward. And now she comes in, and her hands are up. Hey, how are you? And and I feel better. And I'm like, oh, good. And she goes, let's let's do some more. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, this seems to be like a wonderful way to treat people with PTSD, which has been, you know you know, immobilizing people since the pandemic. You know, there's so many issues we're having with PTSD, whether, you know, it's um, on a psychological level or people are unfortunately being abused, you know, more than they have been in the past because they're, they're stuck in with people that may not be very good for them. Um, yeah. Have you encountered any of that or, you know, been really dealing with the PTSD that's affecting especially this country? I am so glad you brought that up. Um, there's someone that I've worked on that has been so paralyzed with this pandemic, like really afraid to do anything. Um, you know, it's, and I know most of us still go to stores now, we do this and that, but this person has been really reluctant to do that. So I, I had a session with them and I asked, you know, what do we need to heal? Where is this coming from? So you start asking questions and I get, you get the answers. You, you call on your angels, your guides, and you, you get divine intervention. And I got that this goes back to an illness of when they were younger and they really had, it was a very serious issue. And that also got buried and never quite dealt with that. And this brought up the fear of possibly dying now. Hmm, that's very interesting. It's really very interesting. And I was so happy to, you know, to get to that part with this person because they needed to feel free again. Well, you and know, I, I think that's, you're doing wonderful, wonderful work. Um, okay. And you were a teacher to begin with. So you haven't been doing this for years and years and years. Um, you first started out as a teacher, correct? Yes, I taught um, middle school music for 36 years. And when I 
started, when I learned Reiki, I, I loved that you can apply Reiki. You could do it on yourself. You could do it on others. You could do it on pets, which I have done on my pet. It's amazing what pets just absorb everything. Um, but my joy is to pass this on to people. And I love teaching Reiki one, Reiki two, Reiki master. And, and I, and I'm, it's just like you're, you're, you're doing something good in the world. You're, you're passing on um, energy that is only good. I mean, what about your spirituality? Do you meditate? Do you pray? How do you ground yourself? I, I meditate. Um, I'm, I, every day I try to meditate. I, I'm, need to do that more. Um, but I do notice that when I meditate, and if anybody could do that, even five or 10 minutes a day, sometimes I listen to a YouTube channel or some soothing music. Um, I do pray. I do ground myself. I, I love gardening. I think you ground yourself by being in the garden. But now that it's winter, um, you know, I ask for a bubble of white light around me, Archangel Michael to protect me especially walking into a store <laughs> to, to get grounded and protected. Uh, there's so many different tips to use that I didn't use years ago. Um, and I'm, I'm just so grateful to know some of these things right now. But you also cook and cooking is grounding. You know, I, I was saying before that I have been crocheting because it helps me. I pray, I meditate when I crochet. It's creative. It opens up you know, that part of my, my psyche, my energy center that just kind of explodes, you know, um, and, and I, and, you know, and as I do it, I call in my angels, they do it with me. So it can't be wrong. You know, no. I feel like, you know, people, you know, there's different ways to meditate, you know? Yeah. I do believe that silent meditation is wonderful if you can do that five or 10 minutes a day, but I also feel like, you know, life is a prayer and we walk through this prayer every day. And part of that prayer are the things that we do that also grounds us and meditate, you know, and, and helps us to meditate and get to that place um, as well. Um, you also do um, tarot card readings, is that true? Well, tarot was actually the first thing I started doing while I was on my last year of teaching. And I was, I was really grasping for straws. I wasn't feeling well. And, and I was looking and I've looked for stuff my whole life, but had fear behind it. But I think when something traumatic happens, um, you just go for it a little bit more. And the first thing I, I did was learn tarot. And I think, you know, years ago, I think it had a, a bad name to it, you know, voodoo and all that other stuff but honest it's it's a beautiful tool for unlocking the subconscious mind to bring thoughts and feelings into conscious awareness through the pictures of the cards and i use i i get i get up in the morning i have my coffee first because i have to do that and then i sit down with my cards and i ask what do i need to know today and it's just amazing what you get and um i'm finding that through teaching tarot People are so into it. I think that taboo is gone. I think people are, to me, it's about direction. What do I need to know about this topic? What do I need to know? People will say, come to me and go, I really want to meet some guy. Am I going to meet them? And I say, well, I don't, I'm not going to tell you if you're going to meet them, but let's see what the cards say about what do you need to do to meet this person? So you know, I also think that, especially with tarot, yeah, I did get a bad rap because it was not such a good thing in, in the past. But I think that now it's what you bring to it. Like if people are going to a tarot card reader, they really need to know, just like I tell people when they come to me for readings, like you check me out, you know, check out the tarot card reader and, and what they believe. And so you're bringing something to it that is from the light. You know, um, you know, you're not giving them definitive answers. You're helping them with their journeys and their lives. And there's a difference, a really big difference. So can I ask you, can you pull a card for me? Yes, I just want to make sure that this. And by the way, here. I pull affirmation cards, um, not every day, but frequently. So you know, for all those who are listening, you know, you don't need necessarily to be a tarot card reader. If you get an affirmation deck and pick the one that you think is prettiest, it doesn't matter. And you pull a card in the morning. You know, it'll help you with your day as well. Oh, absolutely! I I do them. First I do the tarot, then I do an affirmation card, or, or I have a beautiful deck on animals. I just find animals, oh my God, they have beautiful messages. And, mm -hmm. and I, I have my little routine in the morning. Yeah. Oh, Anna got the hermit. 
So this card is truly about going inward. Um, I know you meditate, but this might be a reminder to do a little bit more meditating, to go inward, to seek for the answers that you're looking for because they're there, but you have to be quiet about it. Yeah. And if this is a part of my life where it's a little bit, um, everything's a little chaotic and there's a lot of external stuff going on. So, you know, that's something good that for me to remember and to do. Can you also pull a card for the world? Oh, I love that. You know, during the pandemic, I was um, doing a card every couple of days and I just, I, I'm always amazed. See, I, I don't know, but I, I just, all this is just so special. And, and, and the answers that come up, if you trust, and I think the thing for me, my learning on my journey is to trust. And the answers are there if you trust it. But I was picking a card every couple of days on Facebook and posting it. And people were so grateful about that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really great. And I think when you talk about trust, you know, this world is so full of fear um, right now. And so trust is, um, it's really important. This card, when we ask about the world, I almost started laughing because <laughs> uh, it's, it's the Wheel of Fortune. Now, it's not about Banna White. This is, <laughs> this is about... Um, staying centered in the wheel and the message is if you look at the wheel here is about you don't want to be on the outside of the wheel going around and around and around you want to be in the middle you want to stay centered and you know ground yourself um you know go to go to a session uh take a class uh, do something that's not going to make you flip around and around and around like a crazy person um, if, if you do ask about money, this could have to do something with money, but we're not asking about that. This is truly about people um, being grounded and centered and, and taken one day at a time. Well, I think that's a big message from the pandemic is that we are being led to a place where we can recognize that we need to stop on this crazy merry-go-round that we've been on and to center ourselves and see what's really important in the world that it's money is great but it's not our god you know um the things that we should cherish are our friends and our family and ourselves you know you got to love yourself and i think that's part of you know the overall message you know also what i what i want to tell everybody is that um reiki um you know all the work that maria is doing is something that everybody can learn you don't need to be highly intuitive, although I do believe all of you are, um, but you don't even need to recognize that. You need to be a vessel that the healing from the universe moves through, but you do need to be trained. You know, that's important so that the energy is conducted in a way and you are, con that is appropriate and that you're connecting to the universal energy. So, you know, when you do Reiki or anything like that, you're doing it collectively with people all over the world who are also doing that as well as the highest source, which is God and love, because you're pulling love into people. So, you know, if people want more information about any of that, um, how can they contact you? Well, I have a website um, called amoremaria.com. Amore is my maiden name, and I just, I'm just so happy to have that as because it means love, and Reiki oh. is love. Yes. So, um, it's amoremaria.com. I'm here at the Angel Cooperative in Richfield, and I teach classes. Um, I teach tarot classes. I teach Reiki 1, 2, and 3. And learning these modalities to me is passing on this this beautiful energy to other people who will then hopefully pass it on and pass it on and i i i've seen like from when i was say 30 which is quite a while ago so many changes and people more open to this um you know modalities of healing it's well wonderful. i think that's part of being in the fifth dimension that's part of being in the dimension where we are collectively coming together and hopefully will come together where our focus is deeper than just the power that we were seeking to accumulate in the third dimension so i think that it's all very 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 appropriate would you yeah. mind if i um did a little reading on you i would love it okay um so i am seeing um a man 
Um, I think he died older, but he's not coming through older. He's coming through a bit younger. And he's holding the hand of a little girl. Um, and they're outside. I feel like they're, I'm hearing the, the crunching under their feet. They're outside. And he wants you to know that they're safe. The little girl is clapping, clapping, clapping. Um, she's saying, talk to me more because I am forever with you. And she's very bonded, heart to heart with you. Um, very happy about the things that you've done recently. A um, lot of energy around your husband and his healing. Um, I'm hearing you're in a really good place. Like you've come out of a little bit of a dark place. Um, and I don't mean dark as in absolutely horrible, but a little dark, a little bit of confusion and you're in a really mm -hmm. good place now. Like I feel like you are solidly there. Oh, Does that makes sense to you? That sounds wonderful. I think you brought in my father and sister and that's wonderful. Mm, well, thank, thank, thank you thank for you. letting me do that. Thank you. Well, thank um, you. So I hope that you all enjoyed today's episode. I love talking to all these different healers. Um, to me, it's so wonderful to be able to bring this to the world. Um, if you did enjoy the episode, um, please like, share, and comment on um, the podcast page and on my YouTube channel. Um, be sure to su subscribe to both the podcasts and the YouTube channel so that you never, ever, ever miss an episode. Thank you so much, Maria, and thank you all who are listening in today. And I hope you take the messages that Maria brought forward to us and the information to go forward in your life. May the angel protect you. Always thank be well. Thank you.